Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Walking Together podcast. Today, I'm sitting here myself, Jordan Guy, with Nick Adams, John Magoo, and Kyle what's up? Lewis. Uh, here on this podcast, we discuss many things from what were the Israelites doing in the desert all the way to what's going to happen at the end. Who knows? But God does. Uh, today, our topic of discussion is the gathering, in quotation marks, G, gathering G. What's that all about? The Gathering G is the logo for the Gathering. If you haven't seen it, it's a G, but it looks like an arrow going in a circle. So what is that? Like, what is the significance of it? Why is that a not just a neat feature, but why is it actually significant? Why do you think it's significant? Like the Gathering? Like the Gathering itself or just the G? The G. Have you ever noticed like there's an arrow in it? No. Seriously? No. Wait, where is it? I don't have the logo. I gotta find it. I don't it. either. Yeah, uh, if you see the logo, I'll draw Here. it for you. Nick has a thingy. I mean, I like it because G is the first letter of my last name. Gangsta. Huh? Good, 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 gangsta. Yeah, look at it. The G is actually an arrow. It is an arrow. But it's not just an arrow. It's a circling arrow. Why is it a circling arrow? Because God has called us to make disciples. Who make disciples? Who make disciples. That make disciples. That make more disciples. So it's reproducing. It's, it's, it's ongoing like a circle. It never ends. Yeah. So dun, until dun, Jesus comes back. Dun, dun, dun. You probably never noticed that, but that is the thing. I did never notice it. I Mind didn't notice blown. it either. We were we were actually putting together our discipleship stuff for the gathering, and I had the logo sitting in front of me on the desk, and I looked at the G, and I was like, oh, my gosh, God did that. <laughs> but look, that's, that was way before my time uh, at the gathering. And uh, God went ahead and made our logo a replicating arrow to emphasize discipleship. The infinity arrow. But I did yeah. I did talk to the creator of that logo, and he said that he did put that in there intentionally. Yeah. Which I thought was really rad. You talked to God about it? <laughs> <laughs> Him too. <laughs> The guy who made the font for the logo. Oh, gotcha. Yep. Sweet. Yes. So why why is it important to reproduce or replicate that? Uh, that's what Jesus said to do. Right. So the Great Commission, right? <laughs> yeah. What it, do you remember? Like, do you have that memorized? I know we've been talking about memory verses some, but do y'all have the Great Commission memorized? I, I don't have the verse like do you want it in, do you want it in King James or NIV <laughs> but I can I can quote the verse for you Matthew 28:19 through 20 go for it you got no, it go for it no you got it go. I have the reference you got the reference okay I got the I got reference the verse. so god said jesus when he was he had gone to the cross and he had been crucified and rose again and he was appearing to the disciples and this was like his last Hey, this is what I want you to do. And he said, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. That was probably KJV. Yeah. <laughs> Ye, you have some yees in yeah, there. That yeah. was a- and I don't even read KJV, so I don't know when I memorized that. Probably like in my childhood or something like that. But <laughs> was it, Did you say teach them to obey my commands? Uh, did I? I might have left that part out. Let's read it. That's pretty so important that it's, part. Yeah, because that's a major part of that verse. So Matthew 28, 19 through 20. Read it in the NLT. In, in the NLT version says, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth therefore go and make disciples of all the nations baptizing them in the name of the father and the son and the holy spirit verse 20 teach these new disciples to obey all the commands i have given you and be sure of this i am with you always even to the end of the age 
There's no low in there. Yeah, you definitely don't want to leave out that part. That's like one yeah. of the most important parts of that. Yeah, I, I've always thought about that. It, it's every part of scripture is important. Like that is a. That so is a what cool, are what are the commands? Cool Go. It's the first one. Right. So it requires action. Requires yeah. you to do something. Uh, but teach the disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And when I read that, it's kind of like, are you talking of all the commands? Like all of them? Like <laughs> the 613 laws? Or But if you remember earlier when Jesus is teaching and during his ministry, he, he sums up everything into two, right? Mm-hmm. So it's not, you don't have to, it's really two things. What are the two things? Love God. And love your neighbor as yourself. So we want to be intentional about doing that, and that's why we made uh, the, the discipleship group, the journey group, next gatherings, whatever, whatever you want to call it. But uh, just being intentional about training, equipping, and sending people, and not just doing it one time, but continuing to... To, that's why the gathering G is what it is. It it replicates. It it keeps going on. It's not just a one time thing, or a, it's not just twelve people. It's uh, it's ongoing. So, do you have to be a pastor to disciple somebody? Yes, absolutely. No, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> no. So God calls all of us, right? Uh, and even though, you know, he's speaking to the disciples, but correct me if I'm wrong, there was more than just the disciples standing there when he's saying that. Right. And I, th- I think Jordan's question there, it, do you have to, you know, do you have to be a pastor or, or have gone through some kind of like major training to be able to do that? Um, I, I think no. And I think the answer is in the scripture. It's in the very first part of that, that verse. He said, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go ye therefore. Or not ye, because it's not KJV. (laughs) So what that says to me is like, as long as you're in relationship with Jesus and you're following him, then that makes you a disciple. Mm -hmm. uh, So a certificate or a title doesn't, there's no qualification other than having a relationship with Jesus and telling other people about it. Right. Cause the power and authority is in him, right. not in us. So he's, and that's the beauty of it is, I mean, you can be as, as much of a jacked up message as the next guy. Um, and it doesn't, well, it doesn't matter, but, <laughs> but, it, but it doesn't, it doesn't matter because, all power and authority comes from him. So he's the one that holds that authority. He's the one that holds that power. And when we go out in faith and do what he asks us to do, then we're, we're, it's like, I I always explain this. Like, like if I leave my daughter at home with my sons to be in charge, um, and I don't tell my sons, Hey, Kylie's in charge. Listen to what she's got to say. And I just kind of bolt. And then all of a sudden my daughter goes, Hey, stop doing that. My sons go, whatever. Who are, <laughs> Who are you to tell me what to do? But if before I leave the house, I come in and I pull the boys together and I go, Hey, listen, I'm getting ready to go somewhere. Kylie's in charge. So if Kylie tells you to do something, you do what Kylie tells you to do. Because if you don't, when I come home, I'm going to deal with you. That command of from my daughter from that is going to hold a whole lot more weight than if she just goes and tells the boys what to do without that authority being given to her. So it's kind of what Jesus did with us. He was like, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Um, So all authority over the things in the seen and the unseen has been given to me, and I'm telling you to go and make disciples. Yeah. I think think that's... Part of why at the end in verse 20, when it says teaching them to observe everything I've commanded you, that's important because it's not just making a 
it's just, it's not just making a friend and just hanging out with a friend. The whole purpose of that is to teach that person to observe the commands. Um, you know, so it is okay. Everybody has a past. Everybody has a background. You know, you don't have to be some, you know, ordained minister to, to disciple somebody. But the important thing is, is that you, in that discipleship, you are teaching them to observe everything that Jesus commanded, um, lifting somebody up instead of bringing them down. Right. So, I mean, so imagine my, my daughter, I leave her in charge and she's like, Hey, dad's rule of, um, of not eating ice cream before dinner does not apply because I'm in charge now. And she's like, you just, you, you can disregard that command and just do this because now I'm in charge and dad's not in charge anymore. Yeah. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work that way. Right. So when I come home and they're all chowing down on ice cream and I've got dinner that that's the reason why I left and I come in with dinner and they've all chowed down on ice cream, I wouldn't be pretty upset with her whenever I come in the house to find that. So I think that, you know, at the end of that verse where it says teaching them to obey all the, all that I have commanded you, um, all means all. And that's all, all means. <laughs> yeah. So Bobby mentioned something, uh, past this past Sunday that I really liked. And he just mentioned that n- nobody, including himself, he said, we're not called to be editors of, uh, of scripture. Uh, we don't get to pick and choose, you know, what we want to, obey or what we want to observe um because we don't get to decide that right um all that authority has been given to jesus by god and so god is the one that gets to uh decide all those things uh not us like we don't get to we don't get to say i'm we're just going to chow on ice cream um you know when the same way like trying to teach your kids to be like, Hey, everything that you know that I expect from you, that's, that's how I want you to behave regardless of the fact if I'm around or not. Um, you know, I, I trust them to make good decisions and to treat it as because Jesus, his Holy spirit lives inside of us. He's with us all the time. Even though we can't physically see him, we should treat our lives as though he's physically sitting right next to us. You know, it's interesting how, uh, for whatever reason, people all of a sudden have this weird, uh, this, this difference in feeling when they're in church or like around a, a pastor. So like I've hung out with people and, you know, they, they recognize that I'm a pastor or maybe not even a pastor, but I'm a quote unquote godly man. And they're talking about something. And they're like, Oh, Oh my, my bad. I didn't mean to talk about that because whatever. And I'm just like, well, Hey dude, like God's here, whether I'm here or not, like you don't have to apologize to me. Um, so, yeah. yeah, I think to quote Spider-Man's uncle <laughs> with great power comes great responsibility, right? So all power and authority has been given to him and he's in, in impute that power and authority on us to go out. Um, that, that brings a lot of responsibility on us as, as the disciples making making followers of Christ, not followers of ourselves. Right. So just like, like Kylie's not going to go in and, and tell my boys, Hey, this is, these are the new rules. Cause I'm in charge. When, when I go to pour into somebody else, I should be pouring into them what God has poured into me. So how, so from a believer standpoint, from, from a disciple, from a disciple E Right? Would that be the, the yeah, word yeah, yeah. from a disciplee standpoint? A discipler? Uh, a discipler from a from a discipler's standpoint. Um, how do how do we know what to pass on when it says you know teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you? How do we know what to teach? Uh, I would say reading your Bible is a good place to start. Mm-hmm. Great place to start. So I think once you start, you know, hiding that truth in your heart, it'll just come out naturally. So, so what you put in is what's, what's going to come out. So, uh, and that, I I guess in the beginning of being a disciple, E, not so much a disciple, -er, it was overwhelming because you, you start to realize how much sin is in your life and, and you're thinking, you know, I got to, I got to get rid of all these things. 
before I can start doing something, and that's not the case at all. It's it, what Jesus taught more times than not is just to have faith that He's going to show up because it's His power and His work that's going to do something in you. It's not, it's not you. It's not you getting cleaner or getting better. Uh, but walking in faith over time, you'll start to shed those things off, and people then you'll start to be kind of that light in the darkness, and people start mm-hmm. seeing something's different about this guy and what is it so it's not i'm not trying to take away from that you you should definitely be in your bible and know the word but it is going to be when you're doing those things when you're having those healthy habits people will see it and you won't have to say it so much you won't have to convince people by your word so much what what the difference is I'd say also you know, just just thinking about uh, you know the, the word obviously is going to be the the one place where where there's no doubt this is God's word right when you when you get into scripture that's going to be the one place that there's you know there's there's no doubt this is this is God's word and I can take this and apply this um, but look back to like Old Testament believers they didn't have the scripture sitting in front of them what did they have. They had a relationship. Yeah. They had a relationship with God. They spent time in the quiet with, with God and seeking out his face and, and listening in the spirit to what's going on around him. And, and God speaks to us that way as well. So, you know, if we're, if we're being diligent about growing in spiritual maturity, yes, the word is going to be your go to, right? Because it's, because it's, it's clear. It's black and white. It's there. Um, prayer and and meditation not in trans transcendental meditation <laughs> or like any kind of weird new agey stuff but just meditating on the word so, you know look looking at what what did god say and then and then mulling that over inside you why did he say that and 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 like who was he speaking to when he said that and what for like running through all of that and then praying about it and going god god reveal to me the truth about this scripture lord when you when you tell me that if i give my first and my best that my that my my vats will overflow and my barns will be full <laughs> um you know like like why did you design it that way what's what's the purpose behind that um and you start to you start to learn and understand a little bit more of the heart of god why he why he tells us the things that he says, why, why he disciplines in the way that he disciplines. God's, God's a loving God. So, I mean, you know, we were just talking, we just went through the Tower of Babel not very long ago and the read through the Bible stuff. And I was looking at that and I was looking at how, like, you know, he, he came down and he confused the language when they had all kind of united up around building this tower. And, uh, and I was, I was thinking, God's a, God's a God, uh, he's a loving God, but he, but he disciplines his his children because he loves them. So, so why did he do that in the way that he did that? You know, it's a good thing that the, the, that the people were uniting together, but what were they uniting together around? And, and, and the way that he disciplined them, what were they to learn from that? Um, and I think if we look at scripture that way, we look at how God speaks to us, and how God disciplines us in our own lives, um, as well as throughout Scripture, then we'll go into a level of spiritual maturity that uh, that's, that's deeper than just going through the surface level of listening to sermons and reading through the Bible. Yeah, I <clears throat> I like at the end um, of Matthew twenty eight. It says, "I am with you always to the end of the age." Um, when you're, when you're talking about discipline, it, it made me think about how a lot of times in in my experience, anytime I feel like I'm being disciplined or whatever, it 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 comes as a result of me forgetting that I that I need God in my life, and I think that's maybe what the Babylonian what the Tower of Babel was all about as well as they were building this thing and they were they were you know they were like hey look at us we're awesome we're gonna build this huge thing. And they were creating an atmosphere and a and a culture of not needing God, and just as long as they have each other and they have all their talents and skills and stuff, they're going to do great things. Instead of looking towards God to do great things, um, and so God was 
you know, more or less like, no, you, you have to have me and then confuse all the languages. And then they're like, oh, shoot, we can't do anything now. And, um, you know, I'm sure some people turned away and got bitter. Some people, you know, sought God and, and all that confusion. And, <clears throat> but yeah, for myself in times that I have a, have a little period or whatever, where I'm, I'm not focusing on God, I'll get disciplined in a way that reminds me that I can't do this all on my own and I have to have God or else my life is just a complete wreck. And even in the moments when it still seems like a complete wreck while I'm focusing on God, that promise of I am with you until the end of age, it's like, it's comforting. You know, it's like, even though I'm going through it all, you know, Jesus, God's right there with me. Yeah. Um, I think, I think it's, you know, when you look at that story, the tower of Babel, it's, it's, it's really, It'd be really easy to look at that and go, uh, and, and see something about God that doesn't exist, you know, to, to see him in a light that isn't true. Um, you know, when you, what was interesting about that story to me is, you know, they were trying to build a tower to heaven to be closer to God, right? So the, the motive behind what they were doing to begin with, anyways, was to be closer to God. They were building this tower that was supposed to reach to the heavens so that they could, they could be with God. Um, and then God looks down at that, sees them all unified around this and says, well, anything, you know, anything they try to accomplish at this point, um, uh, they'll be able to do because of how unified they are. Uh, let's go down there and confuse the language. And, and, and that, that almost sound seemed confusing to me the first time I read through it. Cause I was like, why? <laughs> you know, like they're, they're trying to be close to you and now you're going to come down and confuse the language. Right. But, but when you look at it for, for in the light of God being a loving God and, and you look at it from the position of a father who disciplines his own children, right? Um, you look at why the, why that form of discipline? Why am I going to mix up their language and, <clears throat> And to me, it was, you know, they're, they're, God's all, n- never leaves something where he finds it, right? He, when he touches something, he's always advancing it towards something greater. He's always trying to take his children and make them more like him. So when he looks down and he sees all these people and they're all united together around something and they're achieving these great things, uh, and then he comes down and decides to confuse that. To me, that was him going, you know what? If I confuse their language, then it'll make them grow in areas where, where they can't grow right now in the unity that they have. Right? Like when, when they're, they're all speaking the same language, they don't have the challenges of all of that. So, so they don't really have to think or grow in that area. So if I come down and I confuse their language, that'll require them to love one another in a way that they didn't before. Um, it'll require them to rely more on me in, in hearing from, from what my point of view on it is and, and what I'm, what I'm calling them to. Um, and it'll bring them together in unity around the spirit. And, and I think that's what God tries to do with us as, as the body all the time. He's always trying to unite us in the spirit. That's the, that's the gospel message, right? He sent his son to die on the cross to give up his spirit so that we could be back into right relationship with him. Um, and then he, and then you go through Paul's writings and, and, you know, he's constantly going, you're one body with many parts. You got, you got to be in unity with one another. You got to encourage one another and, and, and fan into flames each of the spiritual gifts that God placed in you. Um, and it's, he's, he's constantly trying to teach us to love one another and to love him. Uh, just like we were just talking about earlier, love God, love your neighbor as you love yourself. So I think that, you know, through the gathering, we're talking about the gathering G logo, we're talking about that replication. Um, you know, if, if, if God says the greatest two commandments are love the Lord your God with all your heart and love your neighbor as you love yourself, um, then, then that's what we should be re- replicating and, and purposing ourselves to. And, I, and that's one of the things I love the most about the gathering is that, I mean, it's, it's right there in like everything that we put out. We've got that love God, live Jesus, walk together. Those are uh, definitely some some good reminders, you know, to, just to walk together in the spirit. And that last piece just kind of reminds me to to put others, to value others more than yourself. And that's obviously a hard thing to do because we're natured to be selfish. And uh, one 
question I was going to ask was, you know, or thing sometimes you get hung up on is, is it better to do that? Remember, Jesus did it with 12 guys and, and, and they changed the world. Uh, and it wasn't like Jesus went to a mega church and preached this one sermon and everybody's lives were changed. You have to be willing to get messy with people because I think every person sitting around this table has had an experience where you've gotten a group or gotten involved with people and it's got messy and you've got hurt or you've something's happened and you've stopped and because you were in my case you know you were thinking about yourself how does this affect me how does this hurt me and you stop discipling with each other because of your feelings or whatever it may be but uh, I just I said all that to just encourage whoever's listening to this that you know people make mistakes and people are human and and how many of us have ever made a mistake every day right you know it's you know I probably one an hour or more you know uh, keep trying you know give if you're valuing others more than yourself you won't look at it that way and discipleship happens when you have that attitude and that heart posture and and i've even uh, more times than i like to admit you know you have to be humble enough to say god my heart isn't right my heart's jacked up i don't have a heart for people i am selfish i whatever um and so that first point of submission is is for me kind of how you get in that mindset of thinking about others. So how do you find people to disciple? Like if we're supposed to be disciplers, how do you find people to disciple? I would, I would think, uh, or, or just thinking back, you know, you got to get around people. You got to talk to people. And, Sometimes it's not always just a common interest. Some, maybe a hobby or something brings you together, but sometimes it doesn't. Especially, I remember being, you know, uh, I lived a party lifestyle for a long time, you know, 10, 15 years. And, and when you decide to get out of that, you don't have many friends because you've taken away your common interest. And that was what brought you together. And so then, you know, you feel alone and uh vulnerable and that's a tough spot to be in but you gotta that's part of the reason why we get together on sunday and celebrate and worship and and what flows out of that is is smaller groups and discipleship groups but you have to be you have to have faith that god will provide uh, in your time of need. So I know, I don't know about y'all, but I know I prayed for that for a long time. You know, God put people in my life that are going to point me in the right direction and going to encourage me. And then over time, you know, you can't put a timeline on God. It's not like he's not a genie. You know, you're not, you don't just make a request and decide, you know, well, if this doesn't happen in a week, I'm going to quit praying about it. And, and, and God's not going to do anything. Um, it, it takes time. But I know in my case, you know, God started sending people. And it probably wasn't a whole lot different than before. I just had a heart to where I was looking for it. And I was looking for God. And you start to notice things. And then, you know, you go to breakfast or you go have coffee or you meet somebody on a job or whatever. And, uh, yeah, that was, that's, you know, don't, I would encourage people not to put a timeline on it and not, it's hard to not react off of your feelings in the moment. When you talk about getting disciplined, um, you know, when you get disciplined, your feelings are normally, uh, anger mm -hmm. and, um, uh, disappointment in yourself and and you but long term you see I, I understand why my mom was disciplining me or whatever the case may be so don't always react just on feelings
Yeah. I know that probably wasn't a a good uh transition. No, I, I think I think that was perfect for um you know, answering the question, maybe not particularly exactly what Kyle asked, but it was answers the question of of how how do you put yourself in the position to be discipled? I don't know what's going on upstairs. <laughs> it's kind of weird. But how do you put yourself in a position to be discipled? And you have to you have to be seeking God um, and paying attention to God. Because my story is very similar as yours. Is I didn't once I started seeking God, God automatically started putting people in my place. It, and, and it wasn't even. For me, it wasn't even anything I asked for. It's just something that God knew that I needed, and it just started happening. And I started paying attention to it because I was paying attention to God. And I, th- I think that it, in a way, it does answer exactly what Kyle asked on how do you find people to disciple. And I personally believe that if you are seeking God, then God will bring those people to you. And if you're being obedient, in everything that God's calling you to do. As far as, as long as, uh, for what I mean by that is like waking up in the morning and be like, okay, God, well, what, what would you have me do today? And you're paying attention to God, then God's going to put people in your, in your path that he wants you to disciple. Um, I feel like sometimes we can get ahead of God. Bobby talks about it all the time, getting ahead of God and trying to disciple people that we feel like, oh, this person needs me. I'm going to go disciple them. And a lot of times those are the ones that turn out kind of crashing and burning. You're like, man, I like, I was trying to hang out with that dude and, you know, he was, I was trying to be his friend and it just didn't work out, you know, but the ones that I feel like I don't try so hard and I just, and, and they're just like, all right, God, well, what do you want to do in it? Those are the ones that end up being fruitful. Um, that just reminds me of something I have to remind myself of. There's no formulas with God. So there's no, like, there's no A plus B equals C. So if you do these things, then these things will happen because if it was that way, it wouldn't require any faith. And uh, a lot so, of people are bad with math too. <laughs> this uh, guy. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't require any faith if you had a model of, you know, do these things and this will happen. Well, yeah. then we we would almost become the god, right? Like you said, God's not like a genie where you get to manipulate, and you know, it's like, all right, God, well, you've promised me to give me whatever I want, so I'm going to pray for it, and you're going to give it to me just because I ask for it. Well, it's not, you're, you're, you get to make all the decisions at that point. Um, so, yeah. I think it goes back to it just being a walk, right? <laughs> I mean, it's, you're going to see different scenery. You're going to see different people. It's just a matter of just being obedient. It's, uh, it's cool how God uses even, you know, God works everything for good according to his purpose. God uses the trials and sin and disobedience you went through. And when you get on the other side of that, you know, I start to notice people that I was at the time. And, and God kind of gives, I think, everybody those trials to have a heart for those specific people. And you start that you know that discipleship for me is you know helping people understand like i know you're in this situation i've been in this situation before but just know that there's even though you're in a valley that's you know where all the growing and and stretching happens and and that mountaintop is is uh like john says has said to me before is, is just for observing and looking and reflecting but it's not you know if you notice on top of a mountain, nothing grows on top of a mountain. Uh, and it's, it's so being on the mountain top or having that mountain top experience is not, it's not ideal. It's not sustainable. And so some of your, some of my best times with God have been in my weakest, most vulnerable moments. And, uh, so I think, in discipling people you having all those experiences god points those people out to you and everybody has a specific area of influence and that's how like even talking about the tower of babel like and how those people are unified well when we're all unified and putting our gifts together 
I think if they would have had a, the mindset God intended them to have, it would have played out a lot different. And we wouldn't have just built something huge and cool to look at. It would it would be it would be that train equip sin replicating model and uh just like i I remember jordan preached one time about you know jordan surfs and so jordan has that influence with the surfing community and i like to play golf so you know i i get put in situations on the golf course that i wouldn't been in otherwise so god gives you even things you enjoy as gifts and uh abilities to put you in specific places uh to use for his glory and uh so just look at those things even too just uh some of the talents you have or some of the things you enjoy doing like god can use it all to um put you in places to start discipling people but uh, and i wouldn't i wouldn't make it's not some overwhelming thing like just hang out with people and be a friend to them and love on them and let God, God will do the, the rest of that stuff. It's not like, you know, you need to necessarily carry a notebook around with the specific questions and Bible verses you need to recite to people. And that's going to get them where they need to be. It's just, just love on people. Be a friend. Seek first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added to you. Well, good stuff, y'all. I think that uh, I do think that that is a really neat thing that bringing it all back full circle to gathering G. It encompasses all of that. Um, so whenever you see it around, just let it be a reminder. I w- would be my encouragement in all of it is um, let it be a reminder to to disciple, be a discipler at all times. <laughs> I know for me the gather like there's intentionality in everything and God is intentional with everything and we're trying to be more intentional as a gathering in that training and equipment sending in in what we put out and, and why and I you know, John, I love his mindset, you know, he has qualities or gifts that I don't necessarily have, but John always asks the question of, you know, what's the purpose behind this or why and it so when you see that G, there, you know, it means something. It's not just a letter of the alphabet. It, it's just God went before us to remind us and you that there is a purpose to your life. And when you're in God's will and in that purpose, there is, uh, it's one of the wildest rides I've ever been on. It's, it's uh, unexplainable sometimes. For sure. For sure. But, all righty, y'all. I think this is a good place to wrap this episode up. What do y'all think? Sounds good. (laughs) All righty, y'all. Well, like we said last time, if you have any questions, comments, or uh, uh, anything about what we just talked about, if you want to know more about the first and next gatherings, or even just learn more about the gathering, you can... uh, Get a hold of us each by our individual emails, which would be our first name at gatheringsurfcity.com. Mine's my middle name, by the way. It's not bondage. Yet, well, gathering. technically mine is too. But. It should be bondage because I like bondage better. <laughs> Jordan, look what It is a pirate done. name. <laughs> Sorry. All right, you can reach me by my middle name at Gathering Surf City. <laughs> his you middle can, name is Kyle. Yeah, my middle name is Kyle. What? You can reach bondage at his middle name. At GatheringSurfCity.com. His middle name is Jordan. It is. And uh, you can reach John and Nick at their first names at GatheringSurfCity.com. Uh, you can DM us on Facebook, Instagram, uh, all the social medias. Uh, or you can give us a call at the office. And Miss Diana, I don't know if she can hear us right now. We're being kind of rowdy in here. Um but she will get the message to us and uh, we'd love to answer your questions uh, on the next episode if you have any and uh, yeah anyway um, and you can come worship with us on Sunday yeah that's always an that's option. a good place to find us it, yeah yeah that's true or Wednesday nights or Wednesday nights like tonight I thought today was Friday it's Wednesday 
We release the episodes on Friday. It's confusing. Anyway. You're welcome for all the confusion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know how to get a hold of us. You know where we'll be on um, Wednesdays and Sundays. Uh, we look forward to chatting with you again. Uh, thank you. You. Woo.